The first two months of lockdown had been tough, but around May things changed. The sun came out and confined in my apartment in the middle of this global crisis, I found a new energy, a new inspiration, a new hope. It is a reflection of my enormous privilege that this became an aspect of my experience of 2020. But it occurred to me, as I started feeling a bit of wellness return to my body, that the solitude could be a gift. Like a retreat or a Buddhist monastery. An opportunity for stillness and some sort of peace and calm in the most unlikely of times. My days became more joyful and I think I captured some of that joy on camera. I think I articulated it best in an email to a friend, so instead of trying to describe it now, I'll just read that to you. I'm doing surprisingly well, thanks for asking. Weirdly, I think my days have more structure now than they have for a long time. I've been making a lot more in a more disciplined way, and I'm really enjoying it. My hope is that if I establish really good routines making films and writing and doing things that I want to do, hopefully I'll be able to keep up the momentum when this is all over. It's so strange, in the past few weeks I feel like I've gotten really used to this slower rhythm. At first in this lockdown I appreciated the time to be creative, but I also felt strange and slightly restless, feeling like there was somewhere else I was supposed to be. But I've calmed down a lot. I feel like I've slowly detoxed from the adrenaline and constant stimulation of normal life. And once I was finally over the initial shock of the withdrawal, I became a lot more peaceful. It's just little things like choosing to sit and move in silence instead of constantly having music and podcasts in the background, or sitting on my balcony in the sun and not feeling like I have to be doing anything. I've been reading more and daydreaming more and noticing everything around me, like the colour of the sky in the evenings. I'm writing to you on my bed, which is currently just a mattress on the floor because I've been painting my bedroom walls and I didn't want to sleep in there inhaling all of the paint fumes. So I've been sleeping on this mattress in the brightest part of my flat and the whole bed is in a window so it feels like I'm floating over this city in some sort of surreal urban treehouse. I have so much time to pause throughout my days now and sit on the mattress and notice all of the chalky colours the sky turns between morning and night more than I ever noticed before. You're absolutely right when you said we're all just creating, connecting and reflecting. It's certainly all I'm doing. I feel like I'm being creative in two separate ways. First, all this time has given me the opportunity to set structures and routines in place to make stuff every day like it's a job, which is lovely. But also I felt creative in a very childish way. A lot about this time reminds me of being a child, you know? The long summer afternoons, the stillness, the way your imagination wanders, the lack of control which also feels in some ways like a lack of responsibility. I've been living on my own in this little flat which feels like an alternate world I've created and in this lockdown there's sort of nothing tethering me to reality. So I suppose it's a little bit like when I was a child in my bedroom, half present, half sort of playing at being older, imagining I had a place of my own and I was some sort of very cool bohemian wizard character. I guess now I'm playing at being an artist of some kind and playing at being mindful and peaceful and the sort of person who writes letters and sits editing at a desk with matcha and lives on smoothie bowls and Joan Didion essays. Maybe the difference is that when you're an adult, if you play at something long enough, you actually become it. I hope that's how it works. I found a playlist on Spotify, that's the soundtrack to this movie I watched at my mum last week. It's called L'une Chante L'autre Pas. It's by the Queen, Agnes Varda. And it's this incredible 1970s road movie about reproductive rights and motherhood and abortion. And it's a coming of age tale and it's like a friendship tale. And it's beautiful and it's amazing and it's kind of a musical. Very much the best movie I've seen in ages. Position. 
Il avait raison, Papa Engels. Il avait raison, car à la maison, jamais le bourgeois et la femme. Taylor Swift could never. Anyway. I was thinking about this time last year. I felt so chaotic, as I'm sure you remember. Around this time, I went to Italy spontaneously without telling anyone except my friend Avine. I was just so all over the place and felt like I needed to fly to Naples in order to breathe. It was such an amazing week of walking and filling an entire moleskin journal with so many thoughts. Sometimes I need to get far away to even begin to unlock my brain. I imagine you get this too. Anyway, what's funny is that even though I can't even spontaneously go to Tesco now, let alone Napoli, and even though it may be a long time until I'm going to be able to have any more adventures like that, I surprisingly don't envy 2019 me. Maybe being stuck at home has given me something like what travel used to give me. A respite from the chaos, but a more sustainable one. One which is a little more linked to real life and to creating foundations and practices that I can fully live in. I know it's such a cliché, but this month I've been creating a life so lovely, or at least so me, that I don't want to escape it. I just want Dublin to open up a little more, so I could see some friends and maybe get a coffee. But for now, I'm weirdly enjoying this strange time. It hasn't been anything like I thought it would be. I haven't written King Lear or anything, but I feel like it's a turning point of some kind. Like I've been able to reconnect with myself and befriend myself again. Anyway, sorry for that ramble. Thanks again for writing. This lockdown has made me really appreciate all the people in my life and how many ways we can communicate meaningfully from a distance. I've actually been writing a lot of letters, so we could do that if you'd be into it. It's always fun to get a letter from far away. Anyway, hope you're well and having a lovely long American summer. Love, Firka. My neighbours have started singing over the rattling, rattling bog, and it doesn't sound like I'm going to be asleep tonight. There's 27 verses to this song. <laughs> <laughs>